In this video, I am going to talk about shrinkage priors for Bayesian penalization regression. This is actually based on a paper which was written by these authors. In order to talk about uh, regularization or penalization, first we need to talk about overfitting because actually uh, regularization is a solution for overfitting. If you use uh, a regular regression methods such as ordinary least squares methods, then the models based on these methods tends to overfit the data, especially when we have large number of predictors to estimate. And one of the uh, solutions for this overfitting is what we call a regularization or penalization. Under the penalized regression, the main objective is to shrink small coefficients towards zero while leaving a true effects as it is. By doing that, it will select only a subset of predictors which are important in predicting the response variable. Let's talk about classical penalization regression. Under the a classical penalization regression, in order to talk about a classical penalization regression, uh, first consider a typical regression problem with n data points and p number of predictors. In that case, we can write the regression model as follows. y equals to beta naught plus x beta plus epsilon, where epsilon follows a normal distribution with mean equals to zero and variance equals to sigma squared. Under this classical approach, we can interpret the regularization as a constant optimization problem. That means we are going to minimize a penalty function, which involves two terms. First term is the sum of squares of residuals, which is this term. And the next term is the penalty term, which involves two terms. The first one is the penalty parameter lambda and the Q norm of the beta coefficients. Depending on the uh, value for Q, the type of penalty will vary. For an example, if you choose Q equals to 1, uh, that will equivalent to a lasso solution. And when Q equals to 2, it is a rich solution. So, uh, under this classical penalization methods, uh, we, are we have to estimate this uh, penalty parameter lambda. In order to do that, uh, we are going to use a cross validation. Next, I'm going to talk about Bayesian penalization regression. So, uh, like all the other uh, methodologies under the Bayesian framework, uh, here also we need to define the posterior distribution. So, in order to define the posterior distribution, we are going to use the Bayes theorem. So, using the Bayes theorem, uh, we can write the, uh, this posterior distribution of the parameters uh, are proportional to the likelihood function times the prior distribution. Under this Bayesian penalization regression, shrinkage towards zero will be achieved using a specific form of the prior distribution which involves the penalty parameter lambda. So in other words, uh, we will have a, a conditional distribution for the uh, priors which is actually conditioned on the penalty parameter lambda. Also here, these prior distributions can be treated as a scale mixture of normal distributions. I will uh, tell you why in the uh, next few slides. Uh, one of the advantages of this uh, Bayesian penalized regression compared to classical methods are, under the uh, classical methods, it will be very difficult to quantify the uncertainty of the estimates. And uh, however, using the Bayesian penalization regression, this uncertainty estimates can be uh, obtained very easily using the posterior distribution. So now, uh, in order to get the uh, beta coefficients under the uh, Bayesian penalization regression, we need to find the posterior distribution. To do that, first we need to define the likelihood function and the prior distribution. Since we have a regression problem, the likelihood distribution uh, is a follows a normal distribution with mean equals to beta naught plus sum of xij times beta j and the variance equals to sigma square. Then uh, I have defined the uh, prior distribution. The uh, joint prior distribution can be uh, factorized as follows. Because uh, usually uh, we will not shrink the um, 
intercept parameter because of that it is independent of the uh, sigma squared and the apparent parameter lambda then we have the conditional prior distribution for the uh, beta coefficients which is actually a conditioned on the uh, uh, various term uh, sigma squared and the apparent parameter lambda then uh, we can define the uh, prior distribution for sigma squared and the lambda so in this paper they have defined uh, a non-informative prior for the uh, beta naught so it is equals to one and also another non-informative prior for the uh, sigma squared so by combining this likelihood function and the prior distribution then we can write the posterior distribution using the base theorem as follows so uh, based uh, since we have this a uh, conditional prior distribution for the uh, beta the resulting posterior distribution under the uh, bayesian penalized regression will be uh, concentrated around zero so that's how this penal uh, a shrinkage will be achieved using the Bayesian penalized regression. Now I am going to talk about how to estimate this penalty parameter under the Bayesian penalized regression. So to do that there are basically uh, two approaches. The first approach of uh, what we call the full base approach. So under this full base approach uh, we are going to treat this penalty parameter lambda as a uh, any other unknown parameter by doing that we have to define a prior distribution for the lambda and one of the most popular choices for that is the half Cauchy distribution with parameter 0 and 1 then using the base theorem we can calculate the posterior distribution for the lambda the next approach is the empirical base approach under the empirical base approach, uh, first we need to estimate the lambda from the data hat, which is a lambda hat. To, uh, so to do that, first we need to find the marginal likelihood function. That means uh, we are going to integrate out the likelihood function uh, with respect to the, all the other parameters except the parameter lambda. By doing that, we can find the marginal likelihood function. Then uh, after defining a, a non-informative prior for the uh, lambda, uh, we can uh, calculate the posterior distribution for the lambda based on the uh, base theorem. Because we have the marginal likelihood and also uh, we can uh, define a um, non-informative prior for the lambda by just uh, combining those, we can find the posterior distribution. Then lambda hat will be the posterior mode of that posterior distribution. So now we have a point estimate for a lambda then in order to find the uh, regression co uh, the posterior distribution for the uh, regression coefficients uh, we are going to uh, plug that lambda hat in the model in this model then we can find the uh, posterior distribution of the other uh, regression coefficients after that the authors of this paper have compared the shrinkage behavior of classical methods and also uh, of the Bayesian methods. To, uh, uh, so in these two diagrams you can see these uh, green contours which corresponds to the uh, contours of the sum of squares of residuals which is centered around the OLS estimates that means ordinary least squares estimates for the regression coefficients. And in the in the uh, plot in the uh, left hand side this uh, uh, this dark colored diamond shaped region is the uh, is the constraint region under the lasso penalty here this point which means the uh, green contours and the uh, dark colored uh, constraint uh, region is the uh, corresponds to the um, beta hat estimate under the lasso penalty you can see that under the lasso penalty we can get exact zero coefficients because here this point corresponds to the situation where beta 1 equals to 0 and beta 2 equals to 2. If you go to the plot in the right hand side this uh, blue colored uh, contours corresponds to the posterior distribution which obtained using the uh, lasso prior under the Bayesian framework. Here this a blue point corresponds to the posterior median uh, posterior median 
under this uh, posterior, uh, posterior distribution. You can see that compared to beta hat OLS, this beta hat base estimate uh, was shrunken towards zero. However, it does not provide exact zero coefficients like we observed under the lasso penalty in the classical methods. Because of that, under the Bayesian framework, in order to identify important variables, we may need to do a variable selection. After that, uh, in this paper, they have defined uh, several uh, shrinkage priors, that means these uh, conditional prior distributions that we can use for the beta coefficients. The most uh, uh, simplest prior that we can use is the rich prior. Using this uh, rich prior, the uh, conditional distribution for beta follows a normal distribution with mean equals to zero and variance equals to sigma squared divided by lambda, where uh, lambda follows a half Cauchy distribution. If we choose uh, larger values for, for a lambda, that will result a more shrinkage. The next prior is the uh, student uh, T prior. Under this prior, the uh, conditional distribution for beta follows a normal distribution with mean equals to zero and variance equals to sigma squared times tau j squared. And you can see that now under the uh, uh, under this uh, variance term, uh, the, there is a, a predictor specific variance term that implies more shrinkage. So now this uh, tau j squared follows a inverse gamma distribution with uh, hyperparameters nu and lambda and where this uh, lambda again follows a half Cauchy distribution with parameters 0 and 1. If you choose a smaller values for nu, uh, that, implies, that implies heavy tail distributions for beta j's. Next, uh, next prior is this uh, famous uh, lasso prior. Under the uh, lasso prior, conditional distribution for beta follows a normal distribution with mean equals to zero. We, uh, again, we have a, a predictor specific uh, variance term where now the uh, variance term is uh, sigma squared times uh, tau j squared and uh, tau j squared uh, conditioning by uh, lambda follows the exponential distribution with the parameter lambda squared divided by 2 and a lambda again follows a half Cauchy distribution. So if we integrate out this uh, tau j squared from the uh, prior distribution, then the resulting uh, conditional distribution for beta will, will follow a double exponential uh, distribution with a parameter 0 and a sigma divided by lambda. And if you choose the posterior mode under this posterior distribution, under the posterior distribution using uh, this prior distribution, uh, that will be a similar, that estimate will be a similar under the lasso penalty. Our next prior is the horseshoe prior. So this is actually a very uh, a popular uh, choice for the uh, shrinkage priors. And here this uh, beta j follows a normal distribution with mean equals to zero and variance equals to a tau j squared. And a tau j squared follows a half Cauchy distribution with parameters zero and lambda. And a lambda follows a half Cauchy distribution between a zero and sigma. And if we consider the posterior distribution under the horseshoe prior, it has a very sharp peak around zero and also it has a heavy tail distribution. Uh, the, uh, those two characteristics are very important uh, to be a good shrinkage prior. Because of that, uh, because of these two uh, characteristics, it will shrink small coefficients towards zero while leaving a large effects as it is. The other shrinkage priors that they have discussed in this paper are discrete normal mixture, elastic net, and the hyperlasso. So up to now, we have learned different shrinkage priors. And in this, uh, using this diagram, the authors, have, authors of this paper have compared the uh, densities of different shrinkage priors. So let's uh, consider the density under the uh, lasso prior and the rich prior. You can see that compared to the rich prior, a lasso prior has a sharper peak around zero. 
And also if you consider the other shrinkage pyres, for an example, uh, hyperlasso pyre, horseshoe pyre, and the uh, discrete normal mixture, uh, those pyres also have a very sharp peak around zero, and also uh, those distributions are uh, those uh, distributions has a sharp uh, has a heavy tail distributions uh, those two characteristics are very important to be a good shrinkage pyre uh, then uh, the uh, shrinkage behavior uh, uh, under the uh, different shrinkage uh, priors have uh, compared using a simulation study so in order to do that uh, they have considered a normal model where uh, y follows a normal distribution with mean equals to beta and a variance equals to 1 and they estimated beta on a single observation y which is varies from 0 to 50. So here this uh, x-axis corresponds to the uh, true value and the y-axis corresponds to the uh, difference between the posterior mean and the uh, true value. And here they have fixed the hyperparameter to, uh, of uh, hyperparameter lambda to 1. Based on this uh, shrinkage bias, uh, the most important uh, characteristics that is that uh, the ability to shrink small coefficients towards 0. So if you consider the uh, uh, these lines corresponds to the uh, rich prior and the elastic net prior you can see that the uh, difference between the posterior mean and the observation uh, will increases as the uh, true value increases that implies it will not shrink a large it will not shrink uh, larger effects very much however if we uh, consider the other priors you can see that when the uh, true value is very smaller, there is a difference between the posterior mean and the observation. However, you can see that when the uh, true value increases, uh, the uh, difference uh, between the posterior mean and the uh, true value will approach a zero. So that implies these other shrinkage methods will shrink small coefficients towards zero, but it will not shrink the larger effects very much so up to now based on this paper we have learned that uh, different shrinkage bias that we can use and also we saw a comparison uh, about the shrinkage behavior among different shrinkage bias now they have uh, conducted a simulation study to compare the performance among different uh, uh, regularization methods which includes both a uh, Bayesian methods and also other classical methods so under the simulation study they have generated data based on a linear regression model where y equals to beta naught plus x beta plus epsilon they use six simulation settings and one of the settings is the small p sorry large p small n uh, problem that means there are uh, more parameters to estimate than the sample size also under the each simulation setting they have generated 500 data sets as i told you earlier this bayesian methods does not do a variable selection as uh, it will not provide exact zero coefficients so the authors of this paper have a proposed a method that we can use to do the variable selection finally they use prediction mean squared error uh, as the evaluation criteria uh, to, to evaluate these uh, different methods using the prediction mean squared uh, uh, using the prediction accuracy. So to do that, they have used cross validation. That means they estimated the beta hat using the training data and they predicted the outcome based on the test data. In order to do the variable selection, they have uh, proposed a method because Bayesian methods does not provide exact zero coefficients. They have used this credible interval method. That means uh, this is the uh, counterpart of the uh, confidence intervals uh, that we can see under the classical methods. So under the credible interval methods, they investigated the various credible intervals ranging from a zero to 100% with an increment of 10%, that means a 10% credible interval, a 20% credible interval, so on. 
and then for each uh, each uh, each step size they have uh, identified whether a predictor is excluded or included that means a predictor is excluded when the a particular credible interval for the beta j covers zero or it will be included otherwise then we need to find the optimal credible interval so to find the optimal credible interval uh, they have used this uh, distance measure where it is uh, it is uh, it has this uh, correct inclusion rate and the false inclusion rate so this correct inclusion rate and the uh, false inclusion rates are, are the kind of this uh, sensitivity and a specific measure that we saw under the classical methods. So uh, then we can find the optimal credible interval as the uh, cutoff which corresponds to the lowest distance. So based on the simulation study they have identified when the number of parameters are smaller than the sample size, different regularization methods performed in a similar fashion. However, when the num uh, number of parameters are greater than the sample size, uh, only a few uh, shrinkage methods performed really well compared to the others. Uh, and all these methods are the Bayesian methods. For an example, this uh, horseshoe prior and the hyperlasso prior performed really well compared to the other shrinkage methods. And also, it, it was observed that these uh, Bayesian methods uh, had a very small prediction mean squared error than the uh, classical methods. So, that's all from me and I hope you enjoyed this uh, good paper regarding the Bayesian shrinkage methods. It's provided all the things that you want to learn about differentiating cache priors and uh, using the uh, priors that they have uh, defined in this paper uh, you can apply uh, these priors to your own problem by either writing your own Bayesian code or you can use TAN in order to uh, code these uh, differentiating cache priors very easy. I have included uh, a separate video of how to use TAN in order to fit Bayesian models. And uh, thank you for watching my video and hope you will watch all of my videos in future. Thank you.